everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. This is as good a time as any to start a new episode of Odd Jobs and Small Projects. Here's our first little job underway. Um, in a previous video, we did a brake job on the old caliber here. So I've got now, uh, we're turning all the rotors. Uh, I did one front one already and it came out uh, about 30 thousandths of an inch to the good so it's above minimum thickness it can go again and we'll see what this one comes out at well this here will be our next odd job it's um eight o'clock on friday morning and it's been snowing since noon yesterday uh we've easily got a foot down now and there's no <laughs> no real sign that it's going to end anytime soon. There's a lot of pretty good drifts around. It was really windy yesterday. I came out last night about 10 o'clock and scraped off the driveway in this area here. But um, it filled in again overnight. Oh, what a mess. The old Kubota's going to get a workout today. Nothing on the road but plow trucks. There was one car that, that came along here and he just gave up and turned around in the intersection and went back. That's a lot of snow. And it's that heavy, heavy, heavy wet snow. Well, and here's a job for future. Yesterday during the storm, uh, we had a bit of a brownout and uh, the hard drive in the garage computer managed to get fried. You can hear it. it's making all kinds of funny noises trying to start up. I tried my recovery discs and all that stuff and it just, uh, it won't come to life. According to the diagnosing I've done, it points to a bad hard drive. See, no boot disc has been detected or the disc has failed. Super. It's not so bad over here because I did this last night. Um, I just want to be able to get the truck out and make sure that when you drive a car over this wet snow, it really packs it down and it causes problems later. So it's best to get it cleaned up now before I go out. It is pretty heavy out on the road. I've noticed the uh, uh, the municipal snow plow has been out and about and it is barely moving when it goes along. Uh, he's having a hard time pushing this stuff and that's a big truck. In two years of unlimited screen repairs for free. Don't wait. It's a few cars out but not too many. Anyway, we got this cleaned up to where I can get the truck out, get to my appointment. Then I'll uh, get home and get this all tidied up. This Kubota tractor, uh, I, this thing is worth its weight in gold. If if you are a person that lives in the city and you're thinking of moving to the country, you need to get a tractor with a cab and a snowblower on the front of it. I have, believe me, tried every way possible to move snow in my life. I've had old plucks, old, pardon me, old plucks, old trucks with plows on them, open tractors with snowblowers on the back, blades on the back, chains on tires the best thing in the world is this four-wheel drive tractor with a cab and a blower on the front if you're moving to the country just you need to consider the price of one of these as and include it in the price of of, of your move because these things are just worth their weight in gold. worth its weight in gold i tell you As much as winter pisses me off, it's hard to deny the beauty of it. So here's all four of our brake rotors cut with a nice new surface on them and all four of them are well above the discard thickness. So we can box them up, put them on the shelf and somebody will use them up before long. Here's our next little job as long as we've got the lathe out and going. Um, Deb's dad drives a little Jeep, and back in the summer we gave it a brake job, 
these rotors from it have been kicking around for ages so I thought hey I might as well have a go at turning these and if they're above minimum we'll box them back up and uh, they're good to go for the next time he needs a brake job the rust pits are are hell on the cutting bits but I've got lots of them and I just take little cuts so we'll see where we go with this the back sides of these rotors are are pretty rough but hey we'll see if we can save them what I'm doing right now is just trying to get the, the sides evened up a little bit it, it, I'm still trying to clean up the mess on this side it hardly touches here inboard but as it comes out it'll start getting into meat so what I've been doing until I get them evened up a bit I'm taking only one thou at a time off of this side and I'm taking three thou at a time off of this side and eventually we'll get them evened up and while the lathe is running I'm actually going to attempt to multitask I get all these coffee cans and when I'm doing jobs leftover hardware and stuff I throw them in here and sort it out later well later has come um, my bench is full of coffee cans full of hardware so I dump them all out, sort them out, put them back in the bins or in the drawers, and then we start all over again. Hopefully this will be the last rough cut on this. It, we've got just, you can see, just one little spot here where it hasn't cut yet. And then we'll measure it and make sure we've got uh, enough meat. And once I know I've got enough meat, we'll set it to do a final fine cut, and that'll be this one done. Looks good now. So the minimum thickness, the discard thickness on these rotors is one inch and 39 thousandths. And we have one inch and 56 thousandths. So we're not tremendously over the minimum, but we're over it enough. So I'll take a finished cut now and we'll buff them up and see how it looks. Cutting the Jeep rotors did not go as planned. I was just getting ready to do the final cut on the first one here and the brake lathe uh, for some reason decided to switch from rotor cutting mode to drum cutting mode and the cutter started moving that way instead of this way and gouged into the face of the rotor. Lucky I got it shut off quickly, diagnosed the problem, parts are ordered, that'll be a separate video, you'll have to stay tuned for that. I emptied those two buckets and two coffee cans and this here is the last of the stuff I've got to put away thank goodness what a mess I should do this more often well I always say that and then I just keep finding more things to put away oh well not a worry I like putting things away it makes it easier to find them later Next, we've got a little plumbing job to do. You can see here, water around. This is our reverse osmosis tap. The, the tank is in the basement. So how these things work is the bottom side of this tap has three flexible lines coming up to it. One of them, of course, is the actual pressure-fed line from the tank that makes the water come up there. YouTube. The other two lines, um, because they don't know where you're going to mount the tank, there's there's possibly nowhere to route the, the waste from the tank. So what they do is they bring it up, they bring it up to here, and it's hard to see here, but in the back of this, there's a little hole. And that's your, right there, there's a little hole. And that's your air brake. So there's, uh, just like your plumbing stack, basically it works the same way. So you've got the two lines coming up into an open area. The exhaust from the, the filtration unit comes up and it goes into this well. And then it's supposed to run down that line, which is teed into right there. You can see it's teed into the drain. Now, what has happened to me before is this line has gotten plugged. So what happens rather than the waste from the filtration head gravity feeding down into the drain, it comes out here. That's why it's got a hole in case there's a problem. 
and it, and it runs around on the sink here. So we're gonna pull that line off and see if it's clear. In here, we can see the three lines. So this blue one is the pressure one that comes from the pressure tank down downstairs. That's what actually delivers the filtered water to the faucet. The orange one here is the waste line from the actual filter head. And <laughs> Cooper. And this one here is the drain line that goes into the, the trap here. So we'll uh, pull this off and see what we got. It's on, it's on with a saddle clamp, you see. Okay, so you can see there, that line is full. It's actually flowing. Let me just probe around in here and make sure that that is not plugged with guck. Not all good. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to be sure, once this thing, once this thing is finished doing its cycle, it's just running a bit now because um, we ran the water a bit, so it's it's refilling the it's refilling the pressure tank. So in that process, it will make some wastewater, but it'll it'll stop in a little bit. Once it stops, we'll blow some compressed air up. Like you can see, there is some crud hanging out the end of it, so. There's definitely crap in there. I just probed up into this line and got a whole bunch of crud out of it. So I think we found the problem. I can just put it back together and we're good. You can see all the junk in the bottom of the bucket there. So I have to say we've got this problem solved. Case closed. Well, that's the workbench tidied up. I haven't seen that much of it in a long time. And I guess while we're doing odd jobs, I might as well continue. There's some more tidying up I should do in here. Um, I'm going to keep doing that. Keep tidying up, and then when we finally start working, maybe it'll be easier to work. Imagine that. Well, that literally took all day, but I got this place all tidied up, and tomorrow we could carry on with our odd jobs. Oh, we're slowly... Uh, working our way down through the job cart here. A lot of it was just putting stuff away. Um, I got a couple of little projects we'll, we'll do. Um, here's some cool stuff. We're just gonna put this these things in the toolbox. What these are, these are power supplies from different things, like this one's from a, a PVR. But you'll notice the output, 12 volts, three amps. So you can use this as a, it's a, that's a good regulated 12 volt DC power supply that you can use to check things. You know, three amps is not a ton of current, but you could check uh, light bulbs or little things with it. And if you look around, you can find some that are five volts. And what runs on five volts? All our sensors on the car run on five volts. So you could power up a sensor with this stuff and, and test it. Um, 12 volts, 0.7 amps. See, that's no good for nothing. It, it doesn't have enough, enough current output. This one here, um, 12 volts, 1.25 amps. So we'll keep this one, and we'll put these ones in the scrap. Next job, we gotta hang up this sign, or I guess it's really a license plate. I got this to put on the back of my 488N. But once I put the lollipop lights on the fender, this was going to block the one lollipop light and make it look silly. So we'll just hang it up on the garage door. Uh oh, there it is. I got When I drop a screw, I got to find it before these two do, because they'll usually beat me to anything that's on the floor, and they automatically assume anything that a person drops is something to eat. Here's more stuff to hang up a headlight door off the old neon. Here's our next little job. Deb got this trivet at a rummage sale or a swap meet or something. So we're going to sandblast it and paint it black for her. And while I'm sandblasting, I've got this old center punch that I got somewhere. It's a nice heavy one. So we'll sandblast that and see how it turns out. Got our little uh, Princess Auto benchtop sandblasting cabinet here. You pretty much go by feel because you can't see a damn thing in there. 
That's pretty cool. Now we'll give it a shot of barbecue paint and see how it turns out. Our center punch came out nice too and I can read on it it's a unit tool which is a pretty decent tool. That's awesome. I think she'll like it. I'm going to find out right now because it's coffee time. I'm heading in. To finish this thing off we use Deb's uh, universal hole punch and we uh, punched some some little feet out of this strip of adhesive cork. Perfect. And then now you can see it sits on the counter without making uh, scratches or anything. Here's the next little job we've got to do. We got a couple of pretty nasty snowfalls there um, before Christmas back to back. And um, I haven't really had a ton of time to clean them up. Not to mention that it was a lot of really heavy, heavy snow. And all my paths and little roadways out the back where we walked the dogs and access to the buildings and stuff, it's all blown in with drifts and everything. So it's going to be mild for the next few days. So I want to make sure I get everything all cleaned out. So when this stuff melts, it melts right back down to the, the surface on all my roadways to get us back to square one. Here we are making our first trip around the back and it's always neat to see the tracks from all the animals that have been wandering around back here. This looks like a, a coyote or a fox or something. Come sliding back here, the snow is as tall as the blower. Well, we just pick our way through it. Getting around the corners is the worst part because when you're when you're pushing snow, she only wants to go straight. I probably should put some studs in the front tires. That would help. Well, that was a big adventure, but we got it done. It took me hours, and I burned almost a full tank of fuel. When I started out this morning, the snow was mostly fluffy, but um, the sun came out, and it just turned into cookie dough. And out the back there, where it was as tall as the blower, it was a real struggle getting through it. But anyway, it's done. So now over the next few days, hopefully when it's mild, all my pathways will get cleared right down, right down to the surface. And we could start over again. I didn't want to risk that it would kind of only half melt, especially back there where it was deep, and then freeze. Uh, we'd be in a hell of a mess then. Anyway, all good now. Here's our next little job. It's been a few days since we had the caliber in the shop, and we've been driving it around. And I just wanted to plug the scanner in and make sure all our ready indicators or monitors are green, which they are. And we have had no more codes come up. So I'd say we are in good shape. Also, yesterday I took it over and had it oil sprayed. So um, hopefully that'll keep the rust off it. That was a pretty good load of odd jobs to get done. I think now I'm going to wrap it up. Um, there's still a few there, but they'll get rolled into the next one. Anyway, I want to thank you for tuning in. Hope you'll come and see us again. And until then... This is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. So long for now.